Welcome to GTD. Today I will be showing you some basic tips on how to solder. Solder is used when there is a need to join two or more metallic things together by melting a fill or metal and allowing it to fill in the joints of the metallic pieces. This is primarily used for joining wires or installing small components to a circuit board. For these soldering tips, I will be looking primarily at electrical components. Before sending out to solder, it is important to understand the tools that you will need. In my soldering station, I have a pencil type soldering iron. This allows for greater precision in dealing with wiring and components. My soldering wire can be made of different cores, and in this case, I will be using a rosin core with 60% tin and 40% lead. This is a common type of core used in electronic assemblies unless the overall product needs to be Rojas compliant for environmental reasons, in which case lead-free solders are available. The thickness of the solder is also important. For electrical components, I will use a small diameter solder. I would also recommend having some form of desoldering equipment, such as a desoldering wick, pump, or a station that includes a desoldering gun. In the case of having a board that might be a little dirty with oil or grime, I will keep some alcohol for cleaning the surface and some flux for making sure the connections are clean. Improper cleaning of a circuit board can lead to problems in making a soldering connection. To make things easier, I will bend the leads so that they can be easily placed through the board. I will try to make this as much as a 90 degree bend as possible to reduce the strain on the component. This is called forming component leads. After I have fed through the leads through the circuit board, I will slightly bend the leads on an angle to keep it in place. When I am ready to make a connection, I will clean the tip of my soldering iron by tinning it. To do this, I will let the soldering iron reach my desired temperature and then gently brush the solder wire along the tip. Then I will rub the soldering iron's tip along a sponge, wire ball, or something equivalent so that the tip is clean. I will then place the tip of the pen on an angle on the side of the two connection points and then bring my solder in from the other side. After a little melt, I will pull away. I only kept my connection for a short period of time of about three seconds to prevent any damage to the component. I tried to use as little solder as possible to make the most efficient and reliable connection. A few mistakes to watch out for is using too much solder, too little solder, using too much pressure, or overheating the components. Too much solder can leak to the other side of the board to the component and create a solder bridge, causing a short. Using too little solder can create an improper connection that can break later. The problem with using too much pressure can lead to damaging the board and the component. It is best to just gently touch the component when making connections. The last issue is overheating the components. This is common when working with IC chips that can overheat during the soldering process. After making a few connections, I can touch the chip itself to see how hot it is to the touch. I may need to wait a little during the soldering process to prevent burning out the chip. Ideally, I would like to make a concave-like connection. Having the solder not go all the way through or bubbling up can have pockets of air and not make for a good connection. The soldering iron should be the first to make the connection and the last to leave. If too much solder is used, I can bring in my desoldering wick and place the wick on the solder. I will then touch the wick with my soldering iron to heat up the existing solder and let the wick absorb the excess solder. The absorption should happen immediately. After I am done soldering my connections, I can do a check to see if the connections have been made through a visual inspection. This includes looking on the other side to see if the pad has been filled and if there has been any excessive leakage. When putting the soldering iron away, I will tin the tip and then place it in the holder. As the tip cools down, the solder will harden and prevent the soldering iron tip from oxidizing. 
Soldering kits and solders, along with thousands of other products and services, are available at galco.com.